I hope you sup. I hope the wrath of God come down on you for every day the rest of your life. I hope you suffer, boy. And I'm like, ooh, we. All right, y'all, what's up? As y'all can see, I am getting ready for bed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, shots fired, shots fired. Episode six, the fire this time. Um, like I said, every time I watch the show, like I said, it just reminds me more and more of Ferguson. And I could, like, place faces to the characters of the people who were actually involved in, um, certain situations in the Ferguson protest. But, let's hop right into it. Um, I don't know what the, oh, I don't know what I look like. Because I took this, I had this, like, pinned up earlier. So, Pastor Janae is out there leading the protest. And her protest is saying, you know, if you angry, be angry. I'm, I'm not going to tell you not to be angry. But if this is going to be a riot, it's going to be a riot of a mind, a, mind, a riot of consciousness. Her whole message is using, like, metaphoric terms to state that basically she wants peace. She want to keep this Martin Luther King Jr. Peace, 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 peace all the way around. Why you keep up on me? So while she's up there speaking, somebody throws a bottle at her. With those a bottle in her direction. And you know, a few of the people in the crowd get a little rowdy. They rough the little person up for a second, but not really rough them up, but like get them contained. And it's a white dude came through the crowd. So, Pastor Janae actually goes out and approaches the guy. It was like, you know, you need to remove all your anger, redirect it somewhere else. You can come on down to the church, pray together, reunite, kumbaya. And I'm sitting here thinking, she set that up. <laughs> and I know we said a lot of that during the protests when people were saying that we had um, provocateurs staged throughout the protests. Yes, there was a lot of provocateurs staged throughout there to get the party started, to rile it up. And you already heard her say last episode that she does want this to become another Ferguson. Yet at the same time, she's preaching peace. Well, Ferguson started as a peaceful protest. But due to certain situations and certain people coming in and involving themselves and intertwining themselves in the movement and had different um, state of mind, it exploded, which is what Governor Eamon did not want to have happen. Ashton Preston learned that uh, Durkin just committed suicide. So they decide that they are going to go after Arlen because they believe he was the person that was on duty and that Durkin must be really holding some guilt. For him to take his own life, right? And while they are en route to go like question people and talk to people, you can see the city is in a state of unrest. Um, tensions are boiling, people running around. Um, it just seems like it's it's on the verge of exploding at any moment, like lighting a match to a powder keg. It's about to explode. But Preston tells uh, Ash, well, "This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go and question Eamon about what's going on." You go and hit up Arlen, right? So he goes, when they go in, they go straight accusatory. He goes in, he talks to her. He was like, so when you was going to tell me about your little secret deputies that you got and the corruption that they got going on with them? And she's like, what the heck are you talking about? So he tells her that they got a witness that says that um, one of her deputies is the one who killed Joey Campbell. Well, she was not having that. She was not hearing that. She went off. She was like, she's going to figure that stuff out. But Sarah gave him such a look. It's like, how dare you come up here and bring this drama up in here today? And I'm like, the fuck is that about? Who's, who side you really working on? Are you secretly working for doggone uh, Arlen too? I mean, something ain't right with Sarah. Ash speaks to Arlen and... Based off of their conversation, all it makes it seem like he stopped doing the AD duties like two months ago, which was prior to Joey getting killed. So it makes it seem like he wasn't there. I don't believe him. I just don't believe him. So, but no, Ash takes it to heart and she just rolls with it, right? So Breland goes in and tells the sheriff about Durkin's death. And he seems really bothered by it. The sheriff told me, you know, just chill out, you know, this is your time right now. 
Um, don't stress over that right now. Let's, let's just go out here, celebrate you, the fact that you have been on the force for 29 years. Let's just keep it going. Let's have some happy moment. Walk out here and act like you're surprised. They going out there and they singing. Oh, he's a jolly good fellow. He's good, a jolly good fellow. And they have changed the lyrics to the damn song. They not saying he's a jolly good fellow and nobody can deny. They saying because criminals are starting to testify. So what the hell they say? They say, oh, he's a jolly good fellow. As criminals testify. I'm like, what the hell? As criminals testify, he's a jolly good fellow. What the fuck kind of shit is that? Then, as they are in the midst of singing, Alicia walks on in. And I'm thinking, how the fuck she get back there? This is a police station. It wasn't like it was an open conference room or a party room. She walks on through the crowd and everybody look at her. They don't say nothing. They don't say, ma'am. Hey, hey, where are you going? Who are you here to see? They don't do none of that. They let her walk on through. She walk right up the back. And he looking like, what the fuck is going on, right? So she says to him in so many words, um, what happened? I mean, just, well, actually, don't tell me what happened because I don't want you to lie to me because I'm going to know you're lying and it ain't going to be good for both of us if you start lying to me. So, I mean, I just need to know what was his last words. Um, did he suffer? You know, things of that nature. And he said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. He, he didn't suffer. She said, I hope you do. I hope you suck. I hope the wrath of God come down on you for every day the rest of your life. I hope you suffer, boy. And I'm like, ooh, we. Mm. Somebody the man. So, I mean, like, what, what can he say to that? Like, this woman say, I want the wrath of God until you do right by me. Everything. Boy, that's how I feel. Like, oh, did he just. Eamon rolls up on the sheriff and confronts him about the AD program. She's like, how the heck are you tainting my program? It's supposed to be something good that these people can learn about how to be a deputy and volunteer work. And he's like, um, well, they just like pull the shit out their ass. Pretty much ass your person is. They don't know what they talking about. They mad about the Jesse Carr case. So they just trying, they reaching for anything to try to get their case together. Then he says like, if you would have just had us do our jobs in the first place, like I suggested, they wouldn't even be here. Just said, if I thought you was capable of doing your job, then I would have had you do it. But it's clear that you're not capable because, look, Beck's still on the job. Now, that is very odd. I, I, normally in police uh, shootings, the officer gets suspended with pay. <laughs> But they don't get devoted to a desk job. Um, did he not want to ruffle feathers because Beck was black? And that's why he gave him a desk job. Be, because he, it, so when he left out of there, he went straight to Beck and sat his ass down. He said, you on administrative leave? We pay. That's what's the normal thing. He's like, anybody else, I would have just fired him for saying that. No, you wouldn't. Stop lying. No, you wouldn't. Stop lying. So Beck was like, hey, can I at least stay to the end of the work day? He's like, nah, I need your gun, your badge, right here, right now. He didn't even get stated the whole day. But why? I mean, if I'm getting laid off with leave, with pay, fuck, I'm going to stay for the whole day for it. You don't do shit anyway but sit at the damn desk and drink coffee. That's all you're doing all day long, anyhow. But I know it's, it's a pride thing. I know it's a pride thing, Josh. Then they show Sarah and Preston. And she got the nerve. Like I said, she got, all got the nerve to be going off on him. As if he owed her anything. Like, you could at least gave me a heads up. The fuck he giving you a heads up for? Who are you? You a goddamn overpaid secretary. I'm giving you a heads up. I ain't got to give you no heads up on my dog on investigation. If I felt some kind of way and I wanted to question somebody about some kind of thing, then damn it, I'm going to do it. If I feel like asking the governor about how she feel or what she know, I'm going to ask her. I don't need your permission. But apparently Sarah feel like he do. And then she feel like he old stepped his bounds by looking at her laptop when it was open. I do know that uh, about being an investigator. If it's there and it's open, you're not violating anybody's privacy. So, look. Okay. So, yeah, you violated my privacy and I don't think I can trust you anymore. Bye. Deuces. I didn't I didn't like her with him anyway. I'm like, girl, shoot. Have, have several seats. Have several seats on a chair with a wobbly leg, one missing, and the booty part missing out too. Have seat. 
Right there. Go on, sit down, down. Shut the hell up. That's what you need to do, Sarah. You know, oh, you know, heads up or down. So, Preston and Ash, they head to the station as Josh is packing up and leaving out. And, you know, of course, Josh blames them for him being suspended. And Preston's like, dude, I ain't had nothing to do that. Do with that, but I need to talk to you. And he's like, what the fuck am I doing what I'm here for? No, you can't talk to me here. You know, because you're trying to tell him it was going to be off the record. Why would you ask him to talk to him off the record in the damn police station? But come to find out, they want their for Josh. The sheriff supposedly has this witness now that can, like, bust the whole case wide open for them as far as, like, them tying the two cases together. Basically, this guy said that he sold the weed to, um... Joey and Joey must have sold it to Jesse or something like that or Jesse Joey sold it to him and then he sold it to Jesse one of those two basically it was the same strain of weed and so there's no proof that the cases the murders are connected the shootings are connected it's just you know just happy coincidence back I already told y'all I don't believe in coincidences and neither do I I don't believe in either and so when Preston tried to ask him well if that's the case then um uh, why do we have a witness that says that they saw your AD shoot Joey Campbell. He just tr to over talked all of that. Like, come on now. How you avoiding the question, sir? Ash goes back to D.C. Um, well, she's heading back to D.C. for her court hearing. She said she had to be there at 530 or what have you. And you see police cars with sirens coming down the street. People running. It's getting crazy out there. It's about to set it off up in there. But Preston said, you know, he think he got this. Go on, do what you got to do. Take care of your baby. You know, that's what you need to be there for. Josh at the house, thinking and drinking. And Carrie's like, that's not what we do around her. We don't drink from our kids. And then they get a knock on the door. And it's Preston. She is not having it. She's not having it. He's like, you ain't coming up in here. I know the hell. I know who you the hell you are. And what the hell are you here for? You can go on step, bro. But Josh sitting in the background like, nah, just go on let him in. Go on let him in. She's like, really? Preston go in, sit down, and then sit across from her. And Carrie sit down like... He <laughs> like, Ma, please, uh, let me get a little privacy. Please, please. Oh, she gets up very reluctantly and walks away. And the conversation that ensues again is about them being the only black person in the department. And they know what it means like to be that only black, that token black. And Preston, uh, Beck says that he pretty much, you know, don't have a conscience anymore once you get to do that job. You gotta let that conscience go. He's like, yeah, get your conscience back. Come on, bro, you can get your conscience back. Do the right thing here. And back is like, ain't no such thing in this line of work as the right thing, you know. You try to do the right thing and then, you know. And he like, what you mean? <laughs> what you mean? What, what do you mean? And so he never really, like, really addressed what he meant by that. But Because Preston made the statement then that says that when you said, um... That now you got a license to kill these crackers. Was that a joke? Or was that a confession? Beck was like, get the hell out of my damn house. <laughs> See, hit the door, buddy. Don't let the door not hit you with a good lower split. You go on, step the fuck on out of here. <laughs> so yeah, he put pressure to the bottom of that joint. I was like, did he really just say that? Man, every time you think that you get closer and closer to Josh giving you information or being on your team or at least connecting with you, you say something stupid that pushes him away. I'm like, come on, Preston, you do better. So, up in D.C., Ash goes to Javier's. Confused me, because I thought she was going to court, but she goes to Javier, and she walk in like, what's going on? Where my, where Kai, where my baby at? And there's a court-appointed um, representative, I forgot her title, that's going to be there watching the visit. And she gets pretty upset about that. Like, ain't nobody finna watch me and my daughter do a damn thing. <laughs> Lady broke out her little notebook like, aggressiveness. I don't know what she wrote down, but that's what I would've wrote down. And then Kai runs in, and thank goodness changes the energy. She's like, oh, mommy, she's so happy to see her mom. So Javier and the little bird chick, they leave out, his bird wife. They leave out, and the supervised visit ensues. And they seem, she's, she seems very happy that her mom is there they connect very well she didn't get aggressive in tone with her this time and make her cry so that was a good thing and back in um north kakalaki the protests are getting off the fucking chain yikes 
people are talk there's a group of people in there talking to the governor. They trying to get her to declare a state of emergency. She's like, No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna, you know, turn against my people all in like, hey, I got some armor tanks for that ass. She's like, Hell no, that's not what we're gonna do. But at the same time, you got the police out there in riot gear already marching down and there's the armored tank coming down the street. So I guess, you know, she finally agreed to it. Because Sarah came in and asked her if she wanted to hold a press conference. She's like, no, I'll cancel the press conference. And now the armored truck is coming down the road. And past Janae and her, she having a little sermon. I didn't see the dude who threw the bottle with her, though. At the church, when she invited, I thought that was going to be, like, anticipated that he was going to show up. But no, nah, he wasn't her. Like I said, police start marching in. Mr. Dent is outside looking around like, oh, snap. It's about to go down over here. It looked like the L.A. riots to him, or the Watts riots, the Detroit riots, Ferguson, protest. It's always a riot when it's black people. Someone runs into the church and tells Shamika that Sean is down there in the protest. So she gets up and she rushes out. And I'm not sure when Pastor Janae and her people came out, but they decided to rush out too and they're going down there. Sean is down in the midst of everything. He's looking up at the mural of his brother. Our uh, people with the big old, um, what about Joey signs. And he decides to pick up a trash can and hurls it into this police car. He hurls it into the police car and they like rush him. They rush him. The police do. Shamika tries to intervene. She gets knocked on her ass. And then she lets out that no OMG. I was like, every time she cries, she gets me every single time. She's like, ah. I'm not going to scream now like that because it's almost one in the morning here. So I'm not going to do that. And like I got people in my house, but still. And um, there was like, but they, they they down there getting like rowdy, rowdy, rowdy. Them, the punk, the, everybody's off the chain. The doggone police break out the fucking fire hose. Like it's a 1968 Martin Luther King civil rights demonstration or some shit like that. I'm like, what is going on? Brilliant intervenes there so those kids don't get hit by the hoes. And, you know, Preston sees that he does this. Ash is back up there in D.C. getting her a new asshole turd by her boss and the higher-ups. And they don't like the way the case is going. They was like, yeah, this Breland called us and told us that they found um, a witness that to discredit everything that you said. I don't get that, though. I don't get that. Breland calls and say, yeah, we got a witness that said, I sold the weed to Joey. Uh, to to Jesse Carr, okay, but we have a witness that said that they actually saw the shooter. One don't outweigh the other. I don't. Yeah, but anyway, he told them that they finna um they got like seven days to wrap that shit up because they finna send a whole new team in. So Ashley Preston gonna have to do something within these next seven days and y'all uh get together. I think we only got like four episodes left. It, it's this episode six. Yeah, we got four episodes left for this. So, yeah, I guess the four episodes will happen within this next seven days. Javier stops by. Ash calls him. He's like, what's going on? She's like, I can't believe you did that to me in court. He said, you know, you got some issues you need to deal with. He said, she said, you got issues too. But I will never throw you under the bus like that in court. He was like, you already threw me under the bus. Well, you cheated on me, so he bit her that she cheated on him. She's like, but you know that I'm crazy, and you're the only one that can handle my crazy, and they start kissing, and then they smash. And I'm like, it wasn't no passion, or wasn't no, it wasn't no even I hate you sex type of passion. You know, one that you just gonna smash and knock it out just because I can't stand your ass right now type of sex. But nothing, it was just, they don't match. They, they didn't, they had no chemistry. There was no chemistry there, y'all. Um, there was no chemistry. But anyway, she tries to use that moment as an opportunity to get him to change his mind about taking her to court. And he like, ah, no, we still going to court. You, you, I, I can't see me backing off on this. So when she realized that, um, he wasn't, he said, uh, damn, I can't remember the statement he said, but it was almost like, you don't think or something like that along the line. She's like, yeah, I'm always once they made or something like that. But basically, it came down to ring, ring. I got it on phone. All the whole little sex act, us screwing and get it in. Push play. You want to play it for your boo thing? I play it for. Her. So she's trying to blackmail him into dropping the court case, or she would destroy his relationship. And he like, see, this right here proves that you're an unfit mother. And I'm like, because you set all this stuff up to sleep with him. You knew he was gonna be weak and do it. 
I don't know what's gonna happen with that. I don't know. But um uh, Preston goes confront Arlen and basically lets him know. I think that you are a suspect in Joy Campbell's murder. Uh so we got somebody to put you there. And he was like, Y'all chasing the wrong people. You need to be chasing people who are her turn up our property in our city and our streets right now. The reason why all this is going on. He said that's exactly what I'm looking for. Preston goes to the station house and Shamika's sitting outside, uh, very upset. They won't let her see her son. And she like, I, I blame you. You already know that we ain't gonna get no effing justice here. We can't even get justice from our own dog on people. That's including you. So, yeah, you can't do nothing for me. You've already done enough. Um, so he goes into the police department and he tries to talk to Breland about letting Sean go. He was like, look, she's already lost one son. She don't need to lose another. No, he's a good kid. He was like, yeah, he was a good kid until he, up right to the point that he threw that, that uh, cane into the police car. He no longer a good kid then. And um, he was like, look, I know you got some good in you because I saw you stopping those kids from getting hit with their water hose, their fire hose. And um, he said, so reach aside whatever good cop you used to be. Pull that back on out and go and help this woman out. Bring it like, nah, his ass gonna stay right where he is. I ain't helping him. Is um uh, out at Jesse's memorial, and kids are still getting chased by the police, and one of them kind of bump into him, and he's still looking around like, what the hell is going on? And it looked like the little boy that was Sean's friend that Shamika was talking to was asking where Sean was at, and that that was the end of the episode. With a back walk, looking around like, what is going on? And then my girl Emily Sanday. Song, her song can't stop playing at the end as the credits roll up. I love that girl when she sing. Uh, okay, that was the end of Shots Fire, y'all. Hope I didn't miss anything. If I have missed anything, let me know. Drop it down below. If I got something wrong, y'all know how I do. Let me know that too. And um, thank y'all for coming back and watching. Like I said, I am tired to the red right now. I got on my walk around the house, go to bed type clothes on right now, and um. That's what I'm about to do. And then I'm going to get up in the morning and give y'all the rest of them reviews tomorrow or sometime. Alright, y'all. Peace.